So I just fished out a, another piece of gear, which I've had for some time. I actually repaired this unit and a few others like it a few years ago. So I've actually had this one sitting in a drawer, basically unused for a few years. Hopefully it still works. So I'm going to be using a 500 megahertz to 18 gigahertz input. This is an 18 gigahertz frequency counter. Hopefully it still works. I've just plugged in power for the first time for ages. So this also has an ovenized oscillator in it. Oven is lit up saying it's not made yet. That's fine, I expected that. So let's see if we can get any kind of life out of this. There we go, so at zero dBm it starts showing up. You can see it's stabilizing yet. So this is at least counting still, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Maximum input on this one is 25 dBm. That's damage level. So that's locked on, can I change this now to low level? No, so I need zero dBm, that's fine. We'll stick with that. So let's wind this up, 3 gigahertz, here we go, 4, now until the oven stabilizes in this thing, we're going to get this error, it will get better and better. So I want to make sure that each gigahertz seemingly working correctly, in case there's a stage which isn't down converting or up converting properly or something like that, could be a mixer problem somewhere, you never know. So I just want to verify that each one is actually working. Now also I don't know how accurate the oscillator is in this thing, I haven't measured that yet. It seemed fairly close going by the spectrum analyzer. Obviously the higher in frequency I go, the greater this error will be until it's all warmed up and stabilized, which can take some time. 18.5 this will go to. And there we go. 18.5 gigahertz. Working. I'm gonna leave this running for a little while, let it settle down, and we'll see what we get. Interestingly, the power's increased to 192 watts by doing a higher frequency. Or maybe it's the power output which has done that, I'm not sure. And it's also quite nice to be able to check that this thing's actually working because so I repaired this thing a few years ago and I had no way of actually testing the higher frequencies. The most I could do was 2.7 gigahertz, I think is the most I could do. Maybe not even that at the time. Might be less than that at the time actually. I don't think I had the Bowen Swartz Domba. But I could definitely do testing on gigahertz, but I couldn't do right at the top end. I had nothing to do that. This is why I wanted this thing, because this can then confirm this works. Now as this gets closer we should find that this will start slowing down but I don't know, I mean this has been a couple of years since I calibrated this thing it could have drifted off in that time I really need to have these things on for like an hour to stabilise I mean this could be off, I've got no idea what frequency this is running at really I know it's close but we're now reading under and the oven's still warming up oven is warmed up apparently see it's increasing again now obviously it's got to establish its equilibrium which is why I need to have the thing warming up for about an hour or so just to make sure it's stabilised properly. I think the manual said half an hour, 45 minutes or something like that. I can't remember exactly now. These sorts of things, isn't it? at least an hour for them. Ideally longer. So even at 18 gigahertz, only 13 kilohertz off. So far, still stabilising. It's getting closer. Now that error is probably a combination of both. It could be this or this. I mean, this could be well calibrated. There's a good chance that this is actually really good. So this was ex-Navy, I believe. So they would have had this thing running to spec and calibrate properly and everything so the older the gear is like this the more aged the, the componentry is and the more stable it tends to be you get less fluctuations over time it stabilizes and as it ages and stuff like that just although both of these things are the same age anyway about the same age they're basically designed to work together <laughs> so you could say the same thing for both but again this hasn't been powered up for a long time either as this so there's also a bit of that going on too but as you can see, it's stabilising quite well. One eternity later. So it's been a little while now, and it seems to have stabilised down to about 923 here. So it's about 12 kilohertz down. Now the question is, is it this which is wrong, or is it this which is wrong? I will have to start my Rubidium standard and do a check to see which one is it's actually out. I'll get the Rubidium standard up, and then I can inject that into one of these units. Whichever one makes the biggest change is the one which is wrong. So I've hooked up my Rubidium standard, to this generator here and that is now providing a rubidium frequency reference to the generator and you can see now that this frequency is only one kilohertz out. Rubidium is still stabilizing I mean it's basically locked I mean you can see there's a green light there which means it's locked so it should be basically there so this is out by a kilohertz and this is out by much greater than that. What I should do is probably adjust this to suit and get this adjusted get it calibrated and then I don't need the rubidium hooked up anymore and I'll be able to calibrate this one instead to match this unit. And we should be good then. I mean, one kilohertz at 18 gigahertz isn't too bad anyway. That's why it's nice having a rubidium standard. You never quite know when you need one. 
This is just a unit I put in a box. It's got a BNC up on the back there which is feeding through. At least now I know which thing is actually out. It is this which is out. But that's fine. I'll tweak this, then I'll tweak this. There's an oscillator adjustment inside here for halfway over. In between modules as you can see a block there with adjustment there and just kind of see it under there. It's underneath the A3, A9 unit basically. A3, A8 is what we're looking for. And I've just adjusted that. So this is very slightly below what I was getting with the Ubudium standard running into it. So this is now one of its own internal standard and it's just you know, 100 hertz down or something like that. It's close enough for now, it's going to let it stabilise again that I re-inject the Rubidium, double check and then just get the Rubidium and the internal reference to basically give the same numbers. And I haven't changed this yet, I've just, gone, I've just gone straight to this thing. This will involve putting it apart I think to, to do that and I'll cut bothered <laughs> not right now. So I'm going to do this one instead as it is just by getting these numbers the same. There's other ways you can do it, you can do like 10 MHz reference comparisons and stuff like that but I'm just doing it so the output is correct and we'll go from there. So I'm going to put the Rubidium back in again, compare it again. And there's the Rubidium frequency. So it's definitely still slightly low, so I want, we're going to try and get to 420 or so. So let's do that some more. Right, well, that's tweaked again and it's now closer. It's floating around very slightly, but it's about the right one there now. That's closely the Rubidium one. I think I'm not really going to get any closer than that. When I take the covers off, it cools down just very slightly. And it drops a little bit. And then, yeah, so I'm within 10 hertz. I think that's good enough. All right, so now I'm going to adjust the counter. So it should be 18.5. Hmm. It's a bit dirty here, something causing problems, maybe. Oh, there we go. That's close. It's a bit touchy. I think it might be a bit dirt there, so let's give it a wiggle. I'm going to leave it there. I reckon that will do. So the next thing I need to do is sort out this battery holder. I'm not sure if I can actually get the thing out very easily or not. I might be able to. So the wires go to this. I'm going to take the battery holder out and try and fix it that way. Black and white on the left, black on the right. Now I've got to try and get this holder out. So I'm using this little right angled ratchet thing here with a bit in there. So I'm getting to these screws out, taking the front panel off because otherwise it's a bit of a pain. So it's basically pushing it as a screw and hopefully it will free up. These are quite short screws, I've already got one out so far. But they will slip very easily because they are corroded. And here's the next one. Once they start moving I think they're alright. But... One to go. This bit of one messes up. It's always the last one that messes up. No, nope, that's alright, it's going. We're all good there I think. I'm not sure if I'm going to replace these screws or something else, I'd like to. Not in the best condition. Now let's get these wires off, hopefully they're ripping the posts out of the circuit board. These are on there pretty hard. That's one. Come on, here we go. Here it is. That's all like, flopping around. Okay, so that's how the battery tunnels go, really? Just hang on the back. Look how dodgy that is. Definitely a little bit dodgy there. So I've got some corrosion here I need to try and mop up now because it's fallen into the inside. So here is the battery holder. You can see a decent view of it now. And here is the battery. So obviously these metal bits here that would go in that way around and it will kind of attach somehow. I don't know what actually holds that in there. Oh wait, there was a bracket. Where's that gone? There's also this inside the bag, which must be what clips it together. I'm guessing that sort of hooks on there. Here we go, that's what holds it together. Right, so that's the assembly. Now we could probably fix this, 
but I'm not keen on it. Let's separate this out. Um, yeah, they're pretty, pretty mounted. Here we go. 14200235. <laughs> See, we've got HP part number on it. So, there's a good chance these are just NICAD batteries. So, that's three NICADs together. So, it's going to be like 3.6 volts. Hmm, 3.6 volts. But because these will be NICADs, these will be rechargeable. So, there must be power going to this part of the circuitry as well. I need to find this on the diagrams and actually verify that. Replacing with more NICADs is a possibility. Replacing with exactly the same setup, probably not. So I got a bit distracted from solving the battery holder problem because I'm trying to find a battery in the circuit diagram stuff. I can't find it yet. It's in there somewhere. I just haven't found it. Whilst I was looking through that manual, I noticed a picture of these front panels folded out. I thought, oh, okay. So we've got screws in here which you take out. This then can slide out. You also have to release the nut off the end connector here. And then it allows you to slide this open. Don't forget, we've got an issue with this thing where the switches are dirty a little bit on the front panel here. So I thought, I just want to get to the back of the switches and actually give them a clean. And all it actually is is this like sliding contact on the back of the circuit board, which is also gold plated as well. So all I've really got to do is get in there and spray a little bit with some cleaner, work the switches a little bit. So yeah, that's quite a nice way it folds out. It's got four screws, you know, two on the top, two on the bottom. You'll take those out. So you take the nut off and pivot it out. And you can actually work on it. Talk about serviceable. This one here will do the same thing too. Nice. Anyway, I've got to clean these switches and put it back together. So I've been looking at these indicators on here. When I was playing with the frequency control, I noticed that the one here didn't light up. These ones lit up, this one didn't. So I've been looking and this looks like it might have a fault. The bulb appears okay, but it's not lighting up. I've also got one over here for standby, just there. That is not lighting up, even though it's in standby right now. It's not lighting up. There is 22 volts on there, though oven and standby run from the same power supply. Standby then runs through the switch down here. I'm actually measuring the voltage across that bulb. So that bulb there appears to be blown. Those run off 22 volt supply, so it's also a 24 volt bulb. Yeah, and it's also got the same form factor as this one over here. Bit tricky, but anyway, this one looks like it needs checking, which comes from Q4, so I can actually measure that from the back here. We're going to do that. And another bulb I noticed is blown is, I think it's the 0.3 over here, 0.3 for FM modulation. Let's turn it on. So you can see these ones here. These ones light up. This one does not. Okay. And these ones do work over here, from what I can tell. Out of range, I don't know what that one's doing, I, I don't know, but those may or may not work, don't know. But over here, these ones, the so 0.3 is there, nothing, or well, 0.03 it is. 0.1's working, 0.3, 1, 3, and 10 are working. So it's just the 0.3 over here, or well, 0.03 is not working. That one there should be on, it's not. I think the over range was lighting up as well. But this one looks like it's got a fault right there. When I turn it on, I should be seeing 5 volts across that bulb. So if I set this up, so that indicator should be on right now. If I measure across the bulb, so it is on one side of the bulb, and it's on the other side of the bulb, you're getting nothing there. If I go, say, to there, check on this one instead so you're getting 4.6 volts on the, on the bulb so on this other bulb here you're not getting that lighting up that's leakage okay turn it on there's nothing when it should light up it doesn't so the control for that one appears to be bad so let's just shove one of these probes into one of the ground points you know there's one there shove on the chassis that's supposed to go to ground same thing on it. So let's go on to Q4, which is this one here. I'm not sure which pin's which yet. So there's nothing on that one. This is an NPN transistor. A 0.8 are there. 2.3 there. So we've got 0 volts one side, 0.8 the other side. I think that transistor should be turned on right now. So I think the 0.8 is the gate. Let's try a different one. Let's try the next one down. So that one there is 0.8 when it's turning on. So that one I'm on now must be the last one. Go to the next one down. 
That must be that one. Next one down here must be this one. It is. So I think this one is always on and this transistor here I think it should always be on. All right. Hold, turns it off. There we go. See that's turning on off. Preset. Put it on again. There we go. So that is turning on and off by control. But the output, which is this pin here I believe, hold it. That's gone to 5 volts. So it's trying to pull down, but it can't do it. So either that's shorting on the output, which is possible, shorting across the bulb, or that transistor's weak. So I'm going to measure across the bulbs and see if we've got a short on the bulb housing. Let's have a look. So I'm going to do the next one in first, we know it was working. So I'll measure across that as a reference. We've got 10.5 ohms. I'm doing one next to that as well, just as the second reference. 10.1 ohms. The one which is giving us trouble, not working. About 12 ohms or so. Let's get a better connection. Getting some jumping around there. I think I've got a bad connection with this probe here. Eleven twelve ohms, I mean it could be that transistor. If I go to the actual post on the So there's the bulb connection, right? So it's definitely got a good connection there. There you go, ten point nine ohms. So yeah, the bulb is okay. The bulb is not shorting the holder out. Oh, there'd be a low resistance there. Um, if there's an issue with the actual bulb holder itself. So that's looking alright. It has to be the transistor which is bad. Here is the transistor removed. Now it's actually marked emitter base collector, which is what I actually determined anyway from doing the testing. It doesn't actually say exactly what it is, it says 4-071, something or other, someone gives it some kind of HP part number or something custom. But as it's EBC and it's an MPN, I should be able to replace it with a 2N3904, hopefully. Alright, so I pulled that transistor out by hand, now I'm going to desolder it, clear the holes out and put the new one in. I've already cleaned up before I did the soldering just then. So like I said, this is the 2N3904, which should just drop in. Get it lined up to the holes, there we go. So I'll sit through there like that. Solder that in place. And then hopefully we'll get that indicator back. Trying to get through the bulb so it's double sided so make sure it flows right through. Let's try it out. Power on, just standby. Preset. Now, nah, still nothing. That is interesting. Okay. Let's do some more testing on this. So, this is the bulb here. So there's the edge of the bulb, there's the supply rail. Getting 2.9 volts there again. Maybe there is a problem with that rail. Because this transistor is doing exactly the same thing as the last one. Let's go on to, I don't know, I'm trying to find a zero volt rail, I'm guessing that's a chassis. So zero volts, 0.8 that is turned on, and getting two. Yeah, that's interesting, maybe the other transistor is okay. Check out a tester. So I've just done a test on this. It's coming back as a BGT, as expected, HFE 318. Emitter is blue, correct, red is base, and collector is green. That's the quick pin out. This, that transistor actually looks fine. The one I put in is doing exactly the same thing, so there must be something wrong. That bulb must be dodgy. It must just be something going on with that holder, maybe, I don't know. So there's the holder, just swivel that round. Pull this bulb out. I mean, we're getting 10 ohms there. Now I've taken the bulb out, we'll test it again and check to see if we've got that loading on there. I mean, it shouldn't be unless there's a short somewhere. Um, let's move this back around so it doesn't touch anything it shouldn't touch. Right, let's power that back up. Power this back up. Chassis. Yep, that's looking fine now. Yep, so that's turned on. The output is indeed grounded. These other ones will be floating, although it says 5 volts because it's not active. 
if I push that one, which one was it? One of these. That one there, there we go. Should be 0.2 volts when it's active. You can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so when a digit is active, there should be 0.2 volts on the output. And what we're getting now, it's on now. That one's on. These are off. Alright, so this is showing us nothing. Now let me just go to a, a power rail instead, because that'll be pulling negative. So we've got a 22 volt rail. And onto there, should see about 20 volts. There we go. So, yes, that transistor's definitely turned on, but it seems that when you got a bulb on there, it ain't happy. That's really interesting. So, let's go to resistance. Here's the bulb, and this is measuring 10.9 ohms. Um, that's weird. It tests okay, but it's too much for it. Right, so I was trying to figure out what's going on here. So I actually measured resistance from the output of each transistor, so the collectors of each one, to the 5 volt rail, which you'll share. All the resistances were then like one ohm of each other. So I don't understand why there's a difference between functionality. Can't fault it. So I thought, okay, let's get this bulb which is giving us trouble. Swap it the one next to it. Okay, so I've done that. I swapped those two bulbs around. Let's turn it back on. Preset it. Push a button. You see something here. The problem's moved to the next digit. Now this one's lighting up. This one is not. It must be a bad bulb. Has to be. Unbelievable. You wouldn't think it, would you? Every test I've done has shown it's okay. Weird. Well, I'll put a bulb on my power supply and it's extremely dim. It was really struggling, so that was definitely a bad bulb. So I've got a 5 volt bulb here, it's not exactly the right type. I'm going to try hooking this up to it and just see what we get. See if it lights up okay or not. So as long as I probe it correctly with this, I should be able to uh, hopefully get it to light up. It does. So I'm going to solder this bulb in, it should be close enough to be right. right let's try this again. Power up. Preset. Hey, look at that. That bulb I put in is working nicely. Great. So it wasn't a transistor. It was a weirdly dodgy bulb. I checked the voltage on the bulb as well. It wasn't actually like a high voltage bulb. I actually tried putting a higher voltage into it because when I did put it on a bench power supply, it's extremely dim. So I thought okay, maybe it's a 24 volt bulb or something like that or 12 volt. And I put the voltage up, got to about 8 volts and the bulb blew, even though it's still really dim. So obviously it just is a really bad bulb. So uh, anyway, that's those ones fixed. Still got this one though yet. That's 22 volt bulb. I don't think I've got any 24 volt bulbs for that. Hmm. So I've been working on replacing bulbs and stuff. So I've got all the bulbs on this section now working. I've replaced this 24 volt bulb with a LED with a resistor. So that standby light now works. So I was checking the rest of them and I found that we've got a couple over here which I've already replaced. There were two bulbs here for the RF on and off. They weren't working. And also got another one here which is that 0 0.03 FM deviation. Also not working. I've replaced the bulb but it's still really dim. So I think the bulb wasn't really the issue. I'm, now I'm actually looking at replacing transistors. This is a little board which piggybacks on the back here. This is the driver board. Now these transistors are PNPs and not NPNs. And... I'm going to put a 2N3906 in here. I just think this was transistor that was in here was weak because it was barely lighting up. I have to replace the bulb, it's barely coming on. Now I definitely put a 5 volt bulb in there. It should be good, but it's not. So I'm going to put this one in and see what happens. So the transistor I replaced is Q7. Now when I took this daughter board off, I actually found a couple of these pins on the bottom here are bent because it's got pins down here, here and here. A couple of them are actually bent, like someone's had this off before and not put it back on properly. So I found that could have been an issue too. Maybe that's what's blowing the transistor. Maybe. Maybe it's shortened to a different place. Anyway, that's lined up. Push that back in. Let's uh, put some power on. Hey, it comes up now. Brilliant, that's working. Did it. 
that was the problem. I still haven't done a battery yet. <laughs> the very first thing I started doing in here. Still haven't done that bit. Anyway, that's what the bulb's done. Now I can reassemble this bit and this is finished, apart from doing the battery. So I've now sorted the battery pack thing out. I've taken all this out, removed all the corrosion, put it back together. Now I'm actually not going to use the original holder because I don't think you can get the replacement battery packs for these things anymore, like that style, because they're unique. I've just got in a standard three cell. This is a nickel metal hydride battery. This one's actually a bit small. I'd actually like to get a bigger one in there, but this will do the job for now. It will work. And I've wired it in onto the original post. I've extended the original wires, put like a little header pin thing on here. And that runs down to the original posts on the circuit board. So that just plugs in and when it needs to be changed, you can just have this plug unplugged and a new one plugged in and done. Right, nice and easy. And it's obviously clips together. So that's that part finished. I'm happy with that. And it does work, obviously. Um, I think I'm basically done with this thing. The only thing I really think I need to do is really... I'd like to replace those big caps on the back, but like I said, they're really expensive. And they do appear to be working okay. I, I want to do some more thorough testing on them. The 5 volt one had like 400 millivolts of ripple on it, on AC. And the other three caps had something like 300 millivolts or so, around that sort of number. Yeah, it's getting up there a little bit. So I'm not sure about that. I, I would like to see less. I should really check the specifications and check the actual information on this thing, which tells you probably what the specs are for the maximum ripple on, the, on those rails. It may say that, you know, 400 millivolts is fine. I really don't know. Yeah, I'll look into that later on. But it seems to be functional, at least what I can tell. It's I haven't checked every single thing on it, but it seems to be working okay as expected. So let's pair it up. So you can probably just barely see it there. Standby light there is working. That's the LED I put in. It's a bit dimmer than I'd like. I may change it to a proper bulb, but actually orders and bulbs. Like I said, I don't actually have the right parts right now, so maybe when I come in, I'll, I'll swap that out to a bulb. I don't actually mind the fact that it's different to the rest, though. But It's been drowned out a bit because of my lighting here is very bright. So I can see it here myself fine, but on camera it's a bit harder to see it. Right, so obviously the oven's warming up. I think all the indicators are working now. I think all of them are. I believe I fixed them all. So let's turn this on. And as you can see, the battery must be working because it went straight to 3 gigahertz, which is what was last used. So it's remembered those last settings. And we've got not phase locked, which is fine because the RF power is turned off. We turn the RF on, it's working okay. Um, you can see the indicators over here are now working. So we've got off and on. Now work, they didn't sh work before, they didn't show up. You've got the meter level thing, that's all right. These will work. AM ones will work now. No glitching with the switch. These are now all working. Right, so that's all working fine. So I'm comfortable that it's all doing what it's supposed to do. These are all going. So all these ones are here working as well. But I haven't tested the remote one because that's not one I have much use for really. I'm not going to be hooking this up remotely. This will be the sort of thing I just use occasionally to test pieces of equipment. So I shut it down again. It, you know, I've got this so I could test high frequency gear like I showed before. That 18 gigahertz frequency counter. I had no way of actually testing that to see if it works properly at the high frequencies. And as we saw, it does work. And that is a piece which I repaired years ago. Now I've got this, I can actually use this to verify other bits of gear when I get those situations where it's a high frequency piece of equipment. I've had a few times where it's been high frequency stuff and I haven't had to check the high frequencies because I didn't have the tool to do it. Now I've got it. I don't actually have any use for this apart from testing other pieces of test gear. That's it. Anyway, it seems to work. I'm happy with that. I'm going to uh, button this thing up and go and put it out in the other room in my storage area where I have a collection. There's other videos down below to watch, so if you're interested in my videos, check those out. Be looking in the description, there's links down there. If you're interested in repair videos, that sort of stuff, go and check those out. There will be some popping up on the screen as well, probably. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. Patreon support link over there. They'll help you buy things like this to fix and do videos about. Catch you later.